Ono just wanted a career in mainstream broadcasting. She found herself working for CNN, the 24-hour news network covering the biggest subject of them all, the President of the United States. How did she make it at CNN and on to the White House? I kind of lucked into the whole broadcast journalism field because I originally started off in college as an engineering major, general engineering, but it became very clear to me very early on that was not what I was going to do for a living. So sort of on a whim, I decided to take this intro to broadcast journalism course, which I absolutely loved. I had a magnificent teacher. And from there, I went into a series of internships that eventually led to my first job at a local affiliate, the CBS affiliate in Champaign, Illinois. That led to another job and then I ended up here in Washington working for CNN's affiliate service which is called CNN News Source. So really just a lot of hard work but being in the right place at the right time and just trying to make the most of the opportunities that were presented to me. In 2004 what was happening, uh, obviously it was a campaign year and they had a need for someone to help within the White House unit to go out. There was such an amazing amount of travel involved. The president uh, Bush was campaigning in states, sometimes three different states in one day. And so the White House unit here at CNN uh, needed some help. And so I started to help them in those trips that were, you know, sort of um, what they needed was someone to go out and just be their editorial presence, uh, maybe do a few live shots. But uh, that eventually led to me spending more and more time uh, on the White House beat and then eventually um, it wasn't too long after that that um, I was spending time actually at the White House its, itself. And then from there, uh, CNN uh, decided to put me on the beat itself as, a, as an official uh, White House correspondent. What did she think of President George W. Bush? As a person, he is like many politicians, a tremendously engaging, uh, charismatic person. It's easy to see politics aside. It's easy to see uh, why those who are loyal to him are, are so absolutely devoted to him because he has the ability to be very engaging. And um, a lot of times, I think it, it was not necessarily a full picture that you would see um, because sort of off the record when he would have these off the record sessions uh, when he was a lot more uh, able to be free um, you could get a better sense um, but he was definitely a person who was very camera conscious and you could tell that the difference between when the cameras were on and when there were no cameras present. enjoyable part of the White House assignment? I think definitely traveling. Um, I, I just I think that that was such a tremendous opportunity like I say to just get a, a, a wider view of the world and a deeper understanding of um, you know the way that Americans are perceived. It's impossible for me to name all the countries that we went to, but it, it was tremendous. Just last year alone, I was able to be in Beijing for the Olympics. He was there. Um, I went to Japan. I, we went, because uh, it was his farewell tour, really. Um, we went to Italy. Um, uh, we went to France. Um, we went to Great Britain. Um, just tremendous. Korea. Uh, so it really was a whirlwind kind of a, a, a beat to be on, very exciting and a chance to really get a look at some places. But I also have to say that just walking into that place every day, uh, when you walk through the gates and you walk down that driveway, is a tremendous privilege and it's such a place of history. Um, it, it really is mind-boggling mind when you kind of think about the, the history that's taken place there. So I've enjoyed um, all those moments um, when you see Air Force One, when you see Marine One taking off from the South Lawn of the White House. What about her social life? Um, I don't have a social life. <laughs> I, you know, the thing is, this be uh, working. Um, Working at this pace, it just makes you appreciate the everyday things. I really have a very deep uh, appreciation for all those mundane tasks of, you know, doing laundry. And I mean, I, I love to feel like a normal person. Uh, it is so much fun to be able to just go out and, and 
and browse and you know take a little bit of time because that's obviously something that's in, in short supply for everybody. But my mother is a Batangenya. She is uh, from Batangas, Batangas, and my dad, his family now is in Davao City. I understand Tagalog. I can probably speak a little bit of it, but konte lang. So <laughs> um, I. I am a little bit sad about that because I definitely would have loved to have that ability to just have conversations in Tagalog. And I probably, truth be told, I probably could if I was dropped into the Philippines right now. I probably could. I've seen everything from the city to for a city of Manila to um, even like in my grandmother's um, town just outside Davao City, They're, they have a, they have a farm, a family farm there, so I've been out in the Bukid, as um, my mom and dad say, and so I've had a chance to actually um, see how some people in the Philippines are really trying to do everything they can to kind of, you know, eke out a living, and so I, mean, I, I have had the chance to see that. I think, again, it's really remarkable, the resiliency and the spirit that I just walked away thinking, you know, we are, we are so lucky in this country. I mean, we're so blessed to have everything that we have here. And, and, um, but the Philippines is such, a, is such a beautiful place. I will say that one thing I've always wanted to do is go scuba diving and see the, the whale sharks in, uh, in the Philippines. I know that there's it's a popular diving mecca, and I am a scuba diver. I haven't had a chance to go lately, but I know that diving is supposed to be fantastic there. I met a CBS cameraman on one of the trips who was telling me, you know, well, the next time you're in the, around in Asia, you need to you know, make a trip to the Philippines. So that is something that I would love to do, is to see the whale sharks. What advice does Elaine have for young people who want to follow in her footsteps? I would say to them, understand that um, particularly if you're uh, Filipina, Filipino-American, that, you know, look, you come from a very strong, resilient, hardworking, intelligent people. You need to harness that. And even though things are tough in the economy right now, understand that you have all of that contained within you, that you can, you can use that to do well. But that means, again, that, that it will require sacrifice.